Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. How's everybody doing today? This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. I wanted to have a discussion about this whole movement of going back to Ghana and just explain how none of it makes any sense. You know, the whole idea of us going back to see the slave castles we were sold from as if this is some journey home when in reality it's more of just seeing where people sold us from. And I want to talk about it today and get real and get clear and get honest. Let's talk. So, um, recently I was showing some pictures today of none other than Boyce Watkins all on Instagram showing himself in um, some kind of African gown talking about he meeting the king of Ghana and really just showing that he don't understand American history and he don't understand the history of the transatlantic slave trade. Just less than a few weeks ago he was talking about how he want to be part of ADOS. This shows why he's not anchored in lineage and to the point where he understands none of that makes any sense. So we see this thing, this narrative, where you're going to recreate the, 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 the context of what really happened as if it was just some white uh, colonialists and they set up the, the slave castles and we were stolen from Africa. When in reality, this was a multi-hundred year institution that many, many West Africans took part in. I think we got to get honest. You know, the New Yorker came out with the piece about Nigerians and this is all up and down the west coast of Africa. Since he, this article, my great grandfather, the, the Nigerian slave trader, detailed one of the first times we saw in a major magazine the the reality of how how intimate the slave experience was for West African slave traders. This young woman talks about how her grandfather, her great grandfather, was buried with six slaves that were still alive as tribute. And this is this is not a long time ago. How how there was pride at the funeral from him being a slave trader. I think none of this. None of us really want to deal with the context of what really happened. So now we're setting up this whole false narrative as if we're going home to people that we were stolen from versus people that sold us. And we need to get real with it and talk about it. So the other thing that we see with Boyce Watkins is you see this attempt to undermine and be slick and passive aggressive about everything that's going on with ADOS. You know, um, American Descent of Slavery uh, is essentially a movement demanding reparations and a black agenda focused on ADOS, but not just for ADOS, for black Americans. Um, but I think in a lot of ways we're, we've upset the apple cart, not only with the Democrats, not only with the NAACP, but also with black YouTube. And in, in a sense, what you see is this attempt to redefine black empowerment in a way that is so fantastical that it re-anchors itself in fantasy that you can't see. It's still just fantasy. What do I mean? So you see Boyce Watkins on a video talking about he getting land in Ghana. You see Boyce Watkins in, in Ghana talking about he building trade relationships. What are you talking about, brother? You don't trade nothing. You ain't trade nothing with no Ghana. You see Boyce Watkins in Ghana trying to make slick statements about uh, about what we're doing here versus there as they, to, to kind of elevate and contrast without full context of what's going on. ADOS, American Decisions of Slavery, created a national discussion around reparations, has caused Democratic candidates to focus on and have to deal with black agenda items. I know this for fact. So I don't know what Boyce is doing, but we doing politics. You know, one of these things was one thing I'm reminded of during my most recent trip to Africa is that we don't have to sit around the U.S. and complain about racism all day. There's a great big world out there who loves us. I don't think this man really understands that Africa is not a place, nor do I think he understands where he just visited. But I, I'm going to say it straight. You know, Reuters did an article, and I'm going to read some of it into the record. One of the lines is, many rulers of West African empires, such as the Ashanti Kingdom, whose descendants still live in this part of modern-day Ghana, also profited, selling captured slaves in exchange for guns, cloth, alcohol, and other Western manufactured goods. So... You don't know how likely it is that the tribe leader, that the businessman that you're meeting comes from a lineage of slave trading and now is masking that in tourism to get you to see this, the, the place that he sold your family from. And you're going to dress in a gown that you would never wear here, that you were never raised on to make you feel empowered. None of that makes sense from Boyce. None of that makes sense from anyone else. We saw the same thing from the Congressional Black Caucus. They went there and dressed up in kente cloth. Understand this is all while we're talking about a national reparations discussion here that they're trying to avoid. The, the Black Caucus takes Pelosi down there, takes these pictures. We don't need no pictures in Ghana. We don't need nothing from Ghana but an apology and a peace in on reparations. We don't need you in Africa. We need you here in the American ghettos 
problems that ADOS people are suffering in today. You know, I want to read part of an article from the CBC website. You know, uh, this is this is the words of Karen Bass. We abs Karen Bass is the, the head of the CBC. We absolutely accomplished what we need, what we set out to, said Congresswoman Karen Bass of a recent trip to Ghana with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and 13 members of the, of the CBC Congressional Black Caucus. One was to go back to the origins of slavery, but it was also to renew our ties with the nation of Ghana, dubbing it the year of return. Well, the fundamental problem with all of this is that it doesn't deal with the fact, one, that we all don't come from Ghana. But more importantly, too, these people largely were part of an institution of slavery that traded us into the transatlantic slave trade. And number three, they're not talking about us becoming part of the actual infrastructure of Ghana, getting dual citizenship. They're talking about us as tourists, whether people understand it or not. I'm not here to talk about conjecture or ask them about dual citizenship. Ask them about privilege and access. Ask them about advantage in Ghana because they owe that to us. Ask them about reparation. See, that is, those are the questions that need to be asked. Not whether they can take us on a 10-day overpriced tour of some slave uh, castles. Now, I'm not faulting Boyce Watkins or the CBC for going over there. But I am faulting it, the, 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 those people from a leadership standpoint of selling this to black folks that we know don't have the wealth to go over there. The middle black family in America is worth $1,700. Only a few uh, percentile of blacks even break a million dollars. We know only 5% have more than $350,000. So you, you'll have this boomer class of blacks that want to go back there and spend money that they should be uh, saving for inheritance for their millennials your children to go see uh, the castles in Africa. But none of this makes any sense because all it is is fantastical self-empowerment masked, masking a legacy of slavery, a legacy of, of repair that needs to be done here in America. Adolf's here to do the politics though. So I'm looking at this thing and I, I can't help but read some of this article called Ghana Cashes In on Slave Heritage Tourism. In a clearing at the turnoff to Asin Monso, a billboard depicts two African slaves in loincloths. Their arms and legs in chains. Beside them are the words, never again. This is Slave River, where captured Ghanaians submitted to a final bath before being shipped across the Atlantic into slavery centuries ago, never to return to the land of their birth. Today, it is a place of somber homecoming for the descendants of those who spent their lives as someone else's property. The popularity of the site has swelled this year. 400 years after the trade in Africans to the English colonies of America began, this month's anniversary of the first Africans to arrive in Virginia has caused a rush of interest in ancestral tourism with people from the United States the Caribbean and Europe seeking their roots in West Africa ten years ago no one went to the slave river but this year has been massive uh, said Arasi Butler who runs a company called Butler Tours she said business has nearly doubled this year which has been touted as the year of return for the African the increase in tourism has been an economic boom for Ghana I have no idea how we got here I don't think everybody understands how crazy this is. Over my shoulder is Ali. Ali had a strong tie with parts of Africa. But understand, this was a different era. That was an era where we didn't have, where we had people standing up to capitalism, standing up to Western powers. We had a different Africa that was looking to change itself. This Africa is looking to be part of capitalism. This Africa includes major countries that are selling themselves to China and the US and the like. But none of it deals with the fact that this Africa still didn't deal with reconciling its soul. And I'm particularly talking about these West African countries. For me, I'm looking at this thing and I look at the Ghana caches and all slave heritage tourism and it brings me to an analysis where I gotta start looking at this thing and unpacking it and say, are they hustling ADOS? Are they hustling black folks in the Caribbean? Are they just hustling? And when I look at this thing, I can't help but see a hustle being formed. So what do you mean, Tone? What are you saying? How are they hustling us? You know Tone brings you data. Let's talk. So when you look at this thing, some of the packages are like 10-day tours with eight nights of sleep because of the flight and everything else. Understand that they'll have seven dinners in it and then essentially just give you buffet uh, breakfast. Now, the price point starts at 5000 but most of them are ranging like 7500 Again, middle black family worth $1,700 together. With the, uh, you know, when you take out depreciating assets. 
eight dollars liquid in Boston, a hundred dollars liquid in uh, a, a few hundred dollars liquid in L.A., eleven dollars liquid in Miami. But but we gonna spend seventy five hundred dollars to go see the slaves' castles. But okay, we gonna we gonna just leave that there. So I looked at one of the, the one of the sites to give you some context, and it it's this site where it has the return of the African diaspora continues. And what it says is book your trip for a 10-day tour for $4,700 to start. So we just going to round it out at five, but that's the lowest tr trip. It was eight nights. This is the problem. The problem is when you actually go and break this thing down, it's a hustle going on. And I'm just going to call it like I see it. Labadia Beach Hotel is what they were talking about. They're going to give you eight nights at the Labadia Beach Hotel. They're going to give you some tours, and they're going to give you a flight. Well, when you look at the Labadia Beach Hotel, it's $200 a night, oftentimes $170. If you come in as a group, you probably can get it at $150 or even less. Let's just use the highest price, the price for, for a single person getting a room, $200. Well, eight nights is $1,600. All right, so the room's $1,600. Flights can be found round trip from the U.S. to Ghana for $700. So $700 plus $1,600, where we at? $2,500. Well, that's a hundred and fifty dollars is it that you're charging me $5,000 for something that is $2,300? Even if we add in $500 per tour, we're still at $2,800. I don't understand how people that are supposed to be paying us reparations are charging us a $2,000, $3,000 premium to go see this place that our families were sold from. This is what Boyce is part of. This is what the CBC was trying to sell. It is a giant tourism push. It is not about dealing with the fact that we were enslaved, that we were sold into slavery, that we were buried alive as slaves, that our families were locked out, that our families were locked under, that our families were sent here to die. For a lot of people, this is hard to digest because I know for a long time you've built your identity out of an Africa you've never seen before. But what I'm saying to you today is that your home is here. Come be part of ADOS. Come be part of American Descendants of Slavery. You find us on, 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 in front of the DNC at the debates. You find us in front of the Supreme Court steps. You find us doing politics so your son, your daughter, your grandma, your sister can have a better life here in America. We're not here to be selling overpriced packages. When we did our conference here in Louisville, Kentucky, we charged $15 a ticket. The first 50, 100 tickets, we gave away free. We, we charged nobody to meet special guests. We told you who the special guests were before you, you actually bought your ticket. We had Cornell West and Mary Ann Williamson and let people take as many selfies as they could get with those people. Understand that that, that is how you do it if you're actually about other black folks. For me, I'm not seeing that done here. I'm seeing a tourism push, a, a tourism hustle to take money from people, from my people that don't have it. You have Boyce Watkins out here with a, with a uh, crown on and, and, a, and a gown and all of that. And I don't know what none of that represents. I'm telling you right now, I don't need no land in Ghana. I need land right here in South Central Los Angeles. I need land in Decatur, Georgia. I need land all across America to be re-given to black folks through, through reparations, a package that recognizes the fact that this country, this American country, this wealthiest country in the history of the world, owes us a great deal. I think fundamentally for all of us, we got to stop with the fantastical escape hatches because those escape hatches don't lead nowhere. You know, I, I come and I, I want to end and I start talking about an article I seen in The Root. And essentially the article is titled, uh, Detroit Expat and Activist Killed in Ghana. And it's the story of a, of a lady, she was born Jeanette Salters, changed her name to Mami Nilly Diop. And essentially what happened was, she got some land in Ghana, but basically they killed her over it. The people, the native people in Ghana. Let's read a couple, little bit of the article. So... Mamalia Diop, born Jeanette Salters, was a Detroit activist in the 70s who eventually moved to Ghana as part of her exploration of her roots. The Detroit Free Press is reporting that she was killed in that West African country. Her body, along with that of her sister, Nzinga Jana, was found last week near their home. It is believed that the double killing may have been the result of an argument over land. Some locals decided, moving down some, they wanted to take the land from them. He said, he said his mother took the issue to court and won. I guess the locals decided they were going to take matters into their own hands. 
none of this makes any sense because of the narrative of, of how we're recreating Ghana into a first world nation. As though it has all of the protections that we have here. Now I know we have Eric Garner and Alton Sterling. But at the same time, we have a, a criminal justice system. We have police we can call. We have an actual full first world system here. I think what we don't understand is how much of this is all built on the fantasy of an Africa that we never, never, never experienced. So many of us don't understand how this is built out of the fantasy of Africa versus the reality of us being so American. Understand that are we built the White House. Our bodies, our bones built the wealth that this country was, was uh, birthed out of. Understand that slavery was not a Southern institution. It was an American institution. All of the ports were in the North. All of the banks that owned the notes on the slave plantations were in England and in the North. Understand that all of the clothes were made in the North and shipped down to the South. Understand that the cotton that was made in the South was, tra was shipped up to the North and then shipped out to England in large part. Understand that America could not be America without the American descendants of slaves who built the wealth that this country sits on. And I think for us, instead of running, we need to access and take advantage of the fact of the moment. We need to stand together and demand more of a government that owes us everything, a piece of everything. Here we have Boyce Watkins with a crown on talking about meeting the King of Ghana. Ask him what the King of Ghana is going to really do for black folks in America. Ask him why did it take so long. Ask him, why don't you stay there? So for me, I'm looking at this thing and I, I think that there's a lot of little underhanded slick shots. There's a lot of craze. To me, at the end of the day, what tells it all is that a package that might be worth $2,400 is being sold to us for about five, dollars $6,000. Just want to come to you real quick. This is Tone Talks. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is Tone Talks. Please go to ToneTalks.org. Subscribe and donate. Share this video. Let's get the discussion going. I don't have no problem with people trying to touch their roots. But understand your roots as an ADOS person start right in the South. Thank you.